If there has to be one feature of Excel that almost everyone relates to, even if they don't use Excel, it's got to be charts. In fact, as we've been discussing and preparing for our dashboards by accessing and connecting to data and staging that data, we've always had, at least in the back of our minds, I hope, that dashboards rely heavily on charts. And they should. Charts visually simplify data and make it easily understandable, which pretty much sums up our entire goal for dashboards. Now, there is a lot we can know about charts. They can be generated with one or two clicks, or we can invest significant time creating very elegant, complex charts using a lot of advanced features. Almost all of our health data, though, could be represented by a chart in one way or another. We're going to focus on just one, though, for this demo. We have a health diary that includes some factors related to overall well-being. One of those is exercise. It makes sense that we might want to see how we're doing as far as being consistent in our daily exercise by creating a chart to display that on our dashboard. To generate the chart, let's move down to our Worksheets tab and activate the one called Diary Chart. There's some different information in here, but one of those is our average exercise by week. Now, if we did it by day, we would have a lot of data over time. And usually it's the average per week, because of course we're going to have some days we don't exercise or don't exercise very much. So this is going to help us summarize the data, but still make it meaningful and useful. We'll start by selecting the data, and there's a couple of ways that we can do that. We can select it by clicking and dragging, or of course we could have used the Pivot Table Contextual tab and chosen Select Pivot Table. Either way works, but we didn't have too much data here, so that was just fine. Now that it's selected, we actually have to think for a minute because we have a couple of choices. We can create a standard chart based off of a pivot table, or we can create a pivot chart. The difference? A pivot chart is going to have some interactivity built into it. Since our dashboards should be interactive to some level, let's go ahead and give that one a try. We can do that by activating our Analyze tab, and all the way over on the right-hand side in the Tools group, we have a pivot chart option. Now it really doesn't look a whole lot different than a standard chart. We still have to select the type of chart and create it. Since we're trying to see how exercise changes over time, let's go ahead and just do a line chart using the standard variation and we'll click or tap OK on the bottom right of the window. And there we have it. And I think it's a pretty good representation because it shows us enough detail without being too detailed. Pivot charts are designated or labeled a little bit differently, and I think they're really helpful. We can see that we're talking about average exercise in minutes in the top left-hand corner. And if we go down to the bottom corner, this is where we can actually work with filtering by dates. So if we wanted to see how much we exercised in June or for a particular week or maybe five or six weeks, we can do so very easily without having to create multiple charts. If you're working on one of the later versions of Excel, like I am, You'll notice that you have some tools that make it much quicker and faster than having to go to the ribbon. We can manipulate chart elements by clicking on the little plus sign on the upper right corner. Here, we can add or remove elements by simply adding or removing the check marks. So, for example, we're not going to need a title because the section of our dashboard already has a title, so we'll turn that off. Likewise, we only have one line, one piece of data here, so we really don't need a legend. And as we've mentioned a couple of times, it's a best practice for dashboards to turn off grid lines unless you really need to know how specific a value is. That makes it very easy to clean up our chart and get it ready to present on the dashboard itself. One more thing I think we'd like to do, though, is get rid of all of these dates at the bottom. They could be useful, but really not what we need for summary information. We know that it's simply showing us all of our exercise over the course of time. So we can simply click or tap to select it and then press the delete key on the keyboard. That gives us more room to actually see the graph. And that is really the important part for this particular purpose. So far so good, it's nice and clean and tidy, but the problem is it's still sitting on our diary chart worksheet, not on our dashboard. So we need to move the chart. And unlike a typical cut and paste, we would rather use the actual charting tool so things don't get all confused. If we access the Design Contextual tab and go all the way to the last option on the right side, there's an option to move the chart. This opens a simple window that says, OK, where do you want to move it to? We want to keep it as an object, 
But instead of having it in the diary chart worksheet, we want to put it on the summary sheet. We'll select that from the drop down and click or tap OK. Now, don't panic if you think you've lost your chart. It's there, it's just down on the worksheet a little bit. Sometimes it's helpful to zoom out when you're trying to find objects that get lost. So we'll just move down to the bottom right hand corner and click a couple times on the minus sign to zoom out. There's our chart all the way down here. That's why I don't like to scroll to find it because we can scroll around for quite a while. So what we can do is move that up, even get it sized because right now it's very large. And then when we get it closer to where we want it to actually be, we can zoom back in again so we can see our content. Now it's just a matter of dragging and dropping and sizing until it's placed where we want it within our exercise category. One of the reasons I don't do a lot of configuration when the chart is on the initial worksheet is because of what we can see here. As soon as we start to resize it, it can become a completely different chart. So we need to do a little bit more work with this. Things like adjusting the scale and possibly even making more room for it on our dashboard. But it's impossible to see or know those kinds of things until you actually create the chart and place it where it's ultimately going to go. Personally, I like to prototype my dashboards so that I don't run into any really big surprises like this. But in this case, it's okay because remember, we're working in Excel. So what we can do is simply add some extra space. For us, that means selecting some rows, doing a quick right click, and choosing insert. Everything else gets bumped down, and now we have a little bit more space for our chart. I think with just a little more tweaking, we'll have this chart exactly the way we want it to be to provide us useful information about how much exercise we're getting. Charts are such an important part of Excel, and they should be an important part of your dashboards as well. Just remember to use them appropriately, to choose the right chart type to effectively communicate what you're trying to show about the information. And don't think that you have to do all charts. I can't tell you how many times I've seen screens just plastered with a hundred little tiny charts on them. We do have other options, but charts really are the foundation for most of the work that we do with dashboards.